We will talk today a lot and tomorrow about the ecosystem. And I had a little chat with Klaus Hommels, who will be on the stage in a few minutes when we sit here. And we probably are at a very turning point now where we have to decide in Germany whether we want to be relevant in 20 years or not. And the reason is that we have such a huge change on the world on digital, as you all know. But there are, come, there are now giants coming up in the dimension we never have seen so far that are producing cars, products, consumer products, B2B services, and are scaling globally. If we look at the valuation we see now, it's almost three trillion of the big, of the big five. And if you probably add Alibaba and lots of other companies from China, the relevant number for global players is probably five to six trillion valuation. It's always funny if you see people talk about building automatic driving cars. And you see that the cash position of Apple is more today than the market cap of the three together. The biggest advantage we had was that Silicon Valley tried to attack the car industry. Because even the last politician in that country, in Brussels, got awake that our backbone we have, our industrial backbone, is now being attacked. And I always ask a question if I'm speaking in front of a, an audience like you, and I would like to raise your hand. If you would get in five years a car here in Berlin that drives you around on a community base for 49 euros, that picks you up within the city and drives you fully automatic where you want, emission-free, who would buy a subscription for that 49 euros? Now think what that means for the German car industry, even today if the Audi A8 is a modest car, but think about the business models which are going to change from individual driving to community driving on electric cars. That is a major attack on our industrial backbone. We hear a lot about venture capital. And if you see the numbers, these are, this is an amazing chart from my perspective. Klaus will talk a lot about venture money in a few minutes. But these are exits above 100 million and exits out about a billion. I love Berlin, but look where it is if you see the exits. There's a long way to go, but I truly believe that we can build this digital eco cluster here. And Chano and I will talk about that now, how we can do it. There is a lot to do, but we really have to hurry. One thing, um, good thing, we, we're coming closer on level playing field. I think it's very important that we get the same rights for all players. Um, if you see LinkedIn operating out of Ireland and Zing, Zing got 150,000 euros fine from the Datenschutzbeauftragten, Data Protection Lawyer, Officer in Hamburg, for things that LinkedIn can do easily and without paying anything. It's good that we come to a level playing field, so the politicians are doing and are moving forward very fast to provide level playing field. And now it's our time to build services, products on a level playing field factor and to make that digital revolution really happening in Germany. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Stephanie just suggested that it's only the beginning. At the same time, big tech, back time, big tech companies are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Where do you see some space for entrepreneurs and companies who struggle to digitize? You know, I think the, the whole perspective on that is it starts with the university, for mm -hmm. example, here in Germany. 
If you look world-class university, which you have in America with uh, Calva in Los Angeles, with Stanford, with MIT in Boston, uh, we didn't have for a long period of time that kind of quality going cutting edge on new things. And that is going to change now. We see lots of universities being transformed with lots of investments from the city, from the, um, from the states, and from the government that we increase massively the professors at the universities who go cutting edge technology, both on the digital field as well as on cybersecurity, which is also a huge growth area. Mm -hmm. And um, that thing is now, what can I see, that's now being solved slowly. So we get now much more engineers out mm -hmm. and people who understand tech and technology. Um, and they, people that, that those kind of well-educated people start working in companies and can provide much better mm -hmm. products. I think if you ask me what probably the biggest, the biggest challenge building companies is, we do not have enough people in Europe who really understand products. We if don't? you see the CEOs of American companies like Google, they all come from the engineering or from the product side. And they understand product and technology. Yeah. And the shortage we have is these kind of people who are able to imagine great products compared to the large number you have in America. They are in yeah. Europe uh -huh. a lot. And we're building more and more European unicorns. But uh, compared to the numbers you have in America, who came out of the system 20 years ago, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, and now, All right. we have to accelerate a lot. Let's go a step back. You know, you just left university. You would like to build a company. What is needed in this, this very, very uh, the dynamic uh, digital ecosystem? What is needed to build a successful company these days? Just give me one or two. I think, I think it's, you would need a great product idea that makes yeah. in the head of a customer a huge difference, that makes right. a difference. You need good funding. And what most people don't know, only 25% of all companies in America get funded by professional mm -hmm. VCs. 75% are funded individually, bootstrapped. Uh, we always hear about great VCs who are pulling tons of money on, yeah. on startups. That's not true. 75% get not funded. Mm -hmm. And so you need good support by investors, by a good board that helps you. And then you need a great team to scale your idea really up and to go forward. Mm -hmm. And there, of course, you need, again, technology and you need product people who understand it. Of course, marketing and all that kind of stuff as well. We do have lots of young entrepreneurs in our audience here. Come on, give them an advice. You're not that young anymore. You know a lot. Just give them something. Help them. The to scale their business. A little bit better. Actually, the best, the best advice I can give to you, just think all the time do I have the best team in place? Mm -hmm. That is something I can recommend to everyone. If I see the companies where we have problems in, mm -hmm. team is not good enough. And even in very difficult market, I mean, we have, we have um, e-commerce companies who are fighting against Amazon all the time, and we can gain and grow there, but you need world-class team to, to, to do it. And uh, the one advice, if you ask me, what is the one advice, not only think about technology, product, think about do I have the best team on the ground who's able to scale the company for the phase I'm in. Mm -hmm. So from being a startup company with just a founder going to an international company, you go through waves and you need usually to turn your management team between two or three times to get to an international Wait. company to change your team. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's a huge difference whether you run, let, let me give you one example, it's a huge but difference it's not whether nice you are Lars Henrichs, who founded yeah. brilliantly yeah. Zing, or now you have, you have now Zing as an international listed company with 1,200 people uh, operating in six countries. So it needs very different competencies and skills to do mm -hmm. it uh, for the whole management team. So the one advice I could, if you ask me, I could to give to, to the teams here, always think about do I have the right team to do the things. I think at least 25% of my time about do we have the best team in place? Mm -hmm. Do we get the best people? What, and they really can make a All difference. Right. You mentioned the giants like Google, Facebook, Amazon. Some people say, well, you know, what should I do? They are so big. Can I beat them? No, I don't think so. What's your opinion on that? I think. 
If there's anyone who would like to make a bet with me here in the room, I'm willing to take that. I think in five years' time, mm -hmm. Amazon or Google will be split up. If you see the discussion now starting last week in America, driven by Republicans and Democratic senators, there is now the discussion running on that Google is now today much larger compared to AT&T when they have been split up. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge difference in the administration. I mean, everyone can have this opinion in, about Trump, and I don't comment that. But there's one thing. Obama was very, very close to Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. That is with Trump very different. Not really. And uh, they will think about consumer rights in mm -hmm. this option probably less conflicted than the old Obama administration. Mm -hmm. So my bet is, I think from now in five years, okay. there will be legal regulation, I guess, on Amazon or Google, and they have to split up certain services because they are getting too large and too okay. dominant, and they destroy too many markets, and that's not good for the consumers at the end. I'm betting against it one beer, okay? <laughs> we have a beer. <laughs> Germany is the world champ of small, medium enterprises. Um, everybody knows they have to be digitized in order to succeed in nowadays world. You know, um, but can they? Will they still be successful with digital strategies like they have been all the time? We have this fantastic German Mittelstand, and I'm on the board of a couple of companies, family-owned businesses. They think from morning to night now about digitalization. And there's so much connection to their customers. There's so much uh, thinking. Now are the universities there who are providing great talents which you can employ. There is now mm -hmm. a growing ecosystem, and digital is now 15, 20 years old. You get enough people, even if there's always a shortage of very good people or good people. My feeling is that Job in Mittelstand has great chances to digitalize their services mm -hmm. and products. And of course, if the car industry will go, which I believe that the valuations we will see in 10 years' time will be even much more dramatic, what you have seen on my chart here with mm -hmm. Apple yeah. compared to um, the market cap of our car manufacturing companies, um, the Job in Mittelstand is, is very going on very forward now so you're an optimist? My, I'm very optimistic because right. they think very long-term orientated. Uh -huh. um, they are not usually in large cities, they are in smaller cities. They yeah. know what it means if you burn the company down uh, because you lost your business model. Mm -hmm. So they really fight. Uh, the ones that really concerns me at the moment is it's the tough. whole car uh, sector and the underlying industries. I mean, BSF but, without but, but, cars, okay. what is BSF? Yeah. The only thing you can do, you can shorten the share. The only thing you can do is shorten the share. So if you would have stocks with Daimler or VW, you would sell it? No, no bright future? Let's it's say. just friends. Come on. You Let's just say. Tell. I mean, they, everyone works on it. I think everyone has yeah. understood it. Yeah. If you talk to um, Jay Johan, who is running a Volkswagen digital uh, project, they are very aware. Of it. But the question is, with the financial resources you have with these giants, mm -hmm. we saw. Um, are they fast enough? But, but everyone, 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 believe me, Chano, yeah. when I talked three, four years to Mr. Stadler from Audi, um, they, Audi wasn't very aware. Now everyone is on a total scale alert. But if you know, uh, Elon Musk has this great character, uh, great uh, building in somewhere, I think in California, they tried to build cars and they, they didn't make up the numbers. They fired all the people. Can these Americans build cars? That's a very, very famous German question. They can't. My feeling is, don't look what's here. Uh, it is the innovator's dilemma, what we're mm -hmm. talking about. So for all of you who are not familiar with the concept, innovator's dilemma is, um, is a concept written by a Harvard professor and it says that a product that comes out first and early has less function, functionality and quality than a later stage product. Think about Facebook in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Today, Facebook is providing a lot of communication between people, but it didn't in the beginning. So I would say what you see with Elon Musk mm -hmm. is just the beginning, but wait a couple of years. And I think I'm talking about a very different concept of mobility. Yeah. I, I, I talk about changing from individual buying cars and driving which will run for the next 30 years on the countryside. But the inner cities, 
with the pollution problems we have, mm -hmm. with the parking problems, we will see in 2020, 21, total new car systems coming up, as I said, running automatically um, in a inner city, driving you around on a subscription model. And these cars might not come out of America, but out of China. Yeah. The Chinese are able, they are pushing very hard on electric cars. Yeah, and the, bi and the BMW engineers, we know that, yeah. I mean, they, they push on electric cars very yeah. hard. So there will be Chinese cars coming who provide okay. that. Digitalization is one thing, VC is another thing, but AI is on the horizon. Everybody's talking about artificial intelligence. How will that affect our being in Germany, our business model, our German business model? Are we up to it? Please be, pos be positive. I am, I am. So if you see... Um, we have a lot of great people who work now in this field cutting edge. Uh, if it comes to automatic car driving, mm -hmm. very sad to say, the best engineers are still in Silicon Valley. They are, if you talk to the car guys. Mm -hmm. But that's going to change. We get more and more people out of our university. And, you know, the, the consumer internet, that's 15 years old. We talk now with neuronale nets about something very new. Mm -hmm. And we are cutting edge here. So how will that affect us? Of course, lots of service industries will disappear or will be reduced. I mean, a bot is probably in two, three years able to answer lots of things very efficiently on a phone, on a service mm -hmm. phone, and you mustn't wait 10 minutes in line before you get an, a personal agent. And, and the voice recognition thing is being solved. Just think about the new Google product coming yeah. out, yeah. Uh, translating into 20 languages instantly. And that will work very well. And That's not really positive what you're saying right now in terms of jobs. So will we always be jobless in the future? Let, let, let's say that way. There are great chances for us uh -huh. here in Germany because we, we have great universities, we have great engineers, uh, mathematics working on this topic, mm -hmm. and we have lots of chances to build new, new products. Just mm -hmm. one example which I found always very impressive IBM Watson is working with the Harvard Medical School together. And by analyzing all the, the files, they reduce the number of, of, of uh, mistreatments mm -hmm. by 40%. Wow. So this is a great support, uh, this is a great success of artificial uh, intelligence, and we will see lots of use cases which we can build out. And the funny thing is, if you talk to, to Jim Breyer, who is one of the top American VCs, uh, he tells you this is not a big thing. I mean, Jim is traveling around American universities now, the top 10, and he looks for small teams of 20 people mm -hmm. where he can invest into. It's very early, and f I think it's, it's a great thing we can go into it because it is just the beginning here. And, and okay, my last question. Aware. If you would be 18 or 19 right now, what would you do? What kind of school would you go to? What would you study? Come on, tell me. Would you become a rock star or maybe a dancer or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I really dance very bad. <laughs> no, no, that wouldn't work. Um, so one thing will change with uh, the whole AI thing. In 10 years' time, you need much less engineers by far. Mm -hmm. Because if you see, for example, today Swipe, which is an American uh, company mm -hmm. in the mobile payment field, you just will have certain suites, you click on it, and your software code comes out. Okay, but what would you do if you were 18? Myself, I would go for the same way to be an entrepreneur, uh, work. But if you ask me what I would recommend to young people today, um, the, the, the thing is, if you um, study things with data, data will be the new gold, as we all say. Okay. And to do something with data analytics, to study uh, mathematics, statistics, that will be something for the next 10, 15 years that has great future. And if you ask me what I advise to my children, mm -hmm. then that would be something, and I'm happy <laughs> they're good in mathematics. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Winnes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs>